Yellowstone National Park is one of the most visited national parks in America, receiving over 3.8 million people in 2020, a 5% increase from 2019. Beneath the beautiful landscape though is a massive chamber, and it's this chamber that's of particular interest. Geologists and researchers have long been conducting tests around the area, ensuring that any activity is thoroughly investigated. The United States Geological Survey has been very open about what would happen if the supervolcano erupted, saying the following. If another large caldera-forming eruption were to occur at Yellowstone, its effects would be worldwide. Such a giant eruption would have regional effects such as falling ash, and short-term changes to global climate. Those parts of the surrounding states of Montana, Idaho and Wyoming that are closest to Yellowstone would be affected by pyroclastic flows, while other places in the United States would be impacted by falling ash. The amount of ash would decrease with distance from the eruption site. Such eruptions usually form calderas, broad volcanic depressions created as the ground surface collapses, as a result of withdrawal from partially molten rock below. Fortunately, the chances of this sort of eruption at Yellowstone are exceedingly small in the next few thousand years. End quote. Although the United States Geological Survey says that an eruption is not due within the next few thousand years, they also admitted that you cannot predict when an eruption is going to happen, saying that you can't go by previous eruptions. The USGS said the following, Yellowstone has experienced three at 2.08, 1.3 and 0.6 million years ago. This comes out to an average of around 725,000 years between eruptions, but this is based on the average of just two numbers, which is meaningless. End quote. It's for this reason why some have kept a close eye on the data in order to see if there's been any changes. Even NASA has now got involved, and said that the concept of a super eruption from supervolcanoes needs to be re-evaluated. This comes after new research suggested that volcanic eruptions can still happen even without the presence of liquid magma. NASA said that supervolcano eruptions must be a high priority, and must be studied extensively, saying that they're more of a threat to human life than that of an asteroid or a comet. This is according to Brian Wilcox of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Professor Martin Danzig and a team from Oregon State University studied Lake Toba, which is a large body of water that sits on top of a supervolcano. Researchers studying the lake have said that it's the largest lake in Indonesia, and the largest volcanic lake in the world, and studying it has allowed them to learn a lot. For example, they revealed that the supervolcano below the lake erupted an estimated 69,000 to 77,000 years ago, noting that the explosion was so big that it created a climate-changing event felt around the world. This is due to the fact that the ejection of a large amount of volcanic ash causes a global darkness event, preventing the planet from sufficiently warming up, and causing a global ice age. This appears to have been the case a mere 100,000 years ago when the Toba eruption occurred, and nearly drove humanity to extinction. Prior to this event, there was an estimated 1 million human population. After the event took place, there were only 11,000 humans left, of which caused a massive bottleneck effect that allows us to see the time in which such an event took place. Additionally, this rapid death count occurred when the Toba super eruption caused a global blackout that lasted for more than 10 years. During this time, a massive ice age occurred, and an atmospheric cooling event that lasted for another 1,000 years. Professor Danzig said the following about the study. Supervolcano eruptions can impact global climate, to the point of tipping the Earth into a volcanic winter which is an abnormally cold period that may result in widespread famine and population disruption. The professor and their team said that supervolcano eruptions happens once every 17,000 years, but as previously mentioned, 
This cannot be used as an exact number, as two events that would have happened close to one another would have been counted as one. And also like the United States Geological Survey said, you can't go by previous eruptions. NASA have said that after looking at all the data, one of the best ways to stop or help with a supervolcano eruption would be to cool down the volcano itself, saying that this could be done via heat transfer, with the figures showing that if you could remove around 35% of the heat inside the supervolcano, then an eruption would no longer be a threat. When this was first being discussed, it was suggested that officials could build a giant aqueduct above Yellowstone, and simply increase the amount of water inside the Yellowstone system. However, Brian Wilcox of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory said this wasn't a very good idea. He said the following, People don't want their water spent that way. People are desperate for water all across the world, and so a major infrastructure project, where the only way the water is used is to cool down a supervolcano, would be very controversial. End quote. NASA then suggested drilling 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers down into the supervolcano and bringing down the pressure, noting that the water that would be used for this project could be used to generate electricity. NASA did say though that the project would cost over $3.46 billion, but said that it's one way that could possibly prevent a supervolcano eruption. Some people have voiced their concerns with this, and said that it's one thing to experiment inside a lab, but when you start messing with mother nature anything could go wrong, especially if it's never been done before. Many users echoed the same concerns, with one person saying the following, and what's their plan B if something goes wrong? I'm not saying that nothing should be done as I think it's important that we take this seriously, but what if a chain reaction goes off? What if we increase the chances of an eruption? Who's monitoring this? And whose fault is it if something goes wrong? Also testing it on Yellowstone, a supervolcano which is best known for being massive, and having the ability to wipe out pretty much the entire United States does seem like somewhat of a gamble. End quote. Mr. Wilcox did acknowledge this, saying the following, the most important thing with this is to do no harm. If you drill into the top of the magma chamber and try to call it from there, this would be very risky. This would make the cap over the magma chamber more brittle and prone to fracture. Yellowstone explodes roughly every 600,000 years, and it's around 600,000 years since it last exploded, which should be cause for us to sit up and take notice. End quote. Some scientists have spoken out about this, and said that the amount of water you'd need in order to make a small dent would have to be around the size of one of the Great Lakes in America. For context, Lake Superior holds three quadrillion gallons of water. Ventusky is an app that gives you live updates on wind, rain and temperatures, also allowing users to see maps and detailed forecasts. One user just found a strange anomaly close to Montego Bay, Jamaica. The person who found it said the anomaly was just staying in one place, and that they often use the app, but hadn't seen anything like it before. They said that the satellite had detected the anomaly in early September, and that it hovered in the same region for around three days. The user posted the photographs and links to various online groups, in the hopes of getting an answer for what it was, but some of the users said they tried to view the image in the output and load, or that it had vanished. The man was able to take screenshots of the weather anomaly before it left, and noted that the shape of it didn't match anything that was coming up on the map. The photographs were eventually shared to online groups by users in the hopes of getting answers. However, it seemed that no one could explain what it was or what was causing it, one user said the following, It's been seen in the same area for a day now, and it doesn't appear to be moving. What's especially strange is that I've contacted people who live close to this region, and they've said that nothing is happening in the sky above them. 
This could just be an anomaly that showed up on the app. But what's odd is that these apps are usually pretty good at updating, and it's unlikely to see something like this stick around. It could just be some type of test that was carried out in the nearby area. It's not uncommon for government officials or scientists to spray chemicals in the air. This could just be what we're seeing here. I think that an experiment is the most likely answer. End quote. Scientists have openly admitted that they spray chemicals into the atmosphere, and have said they plan to do this in order to help with things like global temperatures. Solar geoengineering is just one idea that's been presented in order to help fight global warming, and although teams of researchers have said this could help cool the planet, many have expressed their concerns about unwanted side effects. Studies are being carried out by scientists in order to work out the correct amount of chemicals that needs to be sprayed into the atmosphere, saying that the dosage has to be correct in order to tackle climate change. Scientists have said there's still teething problems, and that these need to be worked out before anything is carried out, saying that there's definitely uncertainty surrounding this intervention. They did say though that it's worth the risk, and that we could see dramatic benefits, Dr. Peter Irvine, who led the study, said the following. The analogy is not perfect, but solar geoengineering is a little like a drug which treats high blood pressure. An overdose would be harmful, but a well-chosen dose could reduce your risk. End quote. Others have gone down this route and said that chemicals sprayed into our atmosphere could explain these anomalies that are appearing in different locations. This isn't the only place where these types of anomalies have been detected. This happened recently over the United States. Residents were using weather apps and noticed that a large anomaly had appeared. People wanted answers for what they were seeing, with news crews eventually picking up on the story. Although no official explanation was given for the anomaly, it was reported by weather experts that the most likely explanation was that it was linked to the military, and that they'd been doing some testing in the area. Another similar event was reported when scientists at the University of Alabama in Huntsville said atmospheric conditions caused air traffic control to be suspended. Officials in the area detected a large blob on radar screens that at first could not be explained. Officials soon came forward and said they were behind the mystery blob, noting that the blob was admitted from one of their aircrafts as part of a routine test. Arsenal officials released a statement after residents started to demand an answer for what the blob was. In a statement, officials said that routine tests were being carried out and that reflective particles designed to help aircraft avoid detection by military radar were conducted at the arsenal. They said the following. This RR-188 showed as an anomaly on local weather screens, as weather conditions caused it to linger longer than normal. End quote. Scientists at the University of Alabama in Huntsville said the atmospheric conditions caused the anomaly to be suspended in the air, rather than falling back to the earth as was intended. The military said that people were never meant to see the anomaly, and this was meant to be conducted without people knowing. The military then said that delays with these weather conditions caused the blob to then show up on radar screens. Redstone officials said these chemicals are commonly used by the military in training and testing operations, saying the following. Redstone is committed to ensuring environmental stewardship, while balancing that with our critical missions to support the warfighter. Officials said this spray will not have any environmental effects. Interestingly, although scientists have said they need to conduct more tests before these chemicals are sprayed into the sky, some have theorized that these chemicals are already being put into the atmosphere, and have said that these anomalies that have been detected by radar prove this. Not everyone has got on board with this testing though, and other scientists have warned that by doing this it could cause a reaction from Mother Nature and in turn cause more damage than good. As of right now, scientists plan to carry on with studies into geoengineering. 
So what do you make of this photograph? And what do you think is causing this anomaly? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.